Now for a segment we call Military Minutes. Every other Tuesday, we focus on efforts to support our military in the Bay Area. And today we're talking about military service flags or banners. And joining us now is Dr. Carrie Elk from the Elk Institute. And of course, we always thank you for being here. This is always such great information. Yeah, so much of it we don't know. And you explained to us that these flags were first put in during World War One. Yes, absolutely. The, the surface flag was first made by an Army captain. He patented it back, back then in World War I while he had two sons serving. So the military service flag looks like this. It's got the red border with the white field and it's got the blue stars. This one has two stars just like that Army captains did when he made the first one because he had two children serving in the military. So any family that's flying this flag mm -hmm. is showing that they have family the service member currently serving. Currently Here's serving. one that has one. One yeah. star. Oh, wow. So they've got one service member um, actively serving during a time of conflict or hostility. Okay. So these are displayed like in windows of homes and things like that. And then um, it was in World War II that there became parameters for producing and manufacturing the flags. And then the Department of Defense authorized the whole thing in 1967, 50 years later. And right. then you have one that's very special as well. You yes, absolutely. So. You know, in the civilian community, this is something that I didn't know about service flags. And actually, some military members, service members don't know about these flags. And in civilian world, when you have a gold star, that's something we strive for. You know, a gold star on your paper, on your forehead when you were little, things like that. But in the military community, a gold star is not something that anybody ever wishes to have. Because whenever you have a service member that dies in service or is killed in action, they take a gold star, and it's a little smaller, as you can see, than the blue star, and it's sewn on top whenever they've lost a service member uh, died in service. So that's a, a very sad symbol, and I understand there are specific ways to fly these flags, especially if you're flying them alongside an American flag. Yeah, absolutely. So if you're flying, if you have your banner or your flag, they have them also for a flagpole. If it's flying with our nation's flag, it always needs to be, if there's a size difference, the American flag needs to be larger. But these service flags, these military service flags, are in the same proportion as our American flag, which is 10 to 19 uh, in ratio. And then the American flag should always be on top, on top of, of course. Yes. And if you've got multiple family members serving and you have lost one of your family members in service, oh, if this was a gold star, the gold star would always be above the blue star uh, out of respect. And I've heard, you know, gold star families, and I understood mm -hmm. what that meant, but I didn't know where it came from. And it came basically from, from these banners where you did, they would put the gold on top of it to symbolize yes. the death. Yes, absolutely. And so these will be displayed in the windows or on the doors of those families. And um, certainly a veteran who has served and is no longer you know, serving or at other times, um, they can have a blue star banner inside, but not displayed out in the window like that. Mm -hmm. Now, is this like widely known? I mean, I would imagine this is something only people with service members in their family fly. Is that correct? So immediate family members are authorized. There are specifications, and you can find all of that out on, there's uh, goldstarawareness.com is a place, and the American Legion has a really nice, on their website, under service flags, has a description. But basically, they're immediate family members of somebody um, who is serving, currently serving during a time of hostility or war, and those include parents, grandparents, foster parents, half-brothers and sisters. Oh, okay, so it kind of, yes. the net is a little bit larger a than I originally larger, thought. It still is, you know, the immediate family. It can't Got be it. like a distant cousin or something like that. Well, that is something for us civilians who don't have people serving over there too. If we see something like this, go and check on them, make sure that they're they're showing sure. love from us. So yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Yeah, it's wonderful. Well, we are here to help you make today great. And we'll be right back.